Well, hello again, everyone. This is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus Dry Docks. And as you can see before me, I got another submarine that I want to share with you. What you see before you is the United States Lafayette class submarine uh, as a kit offered by Engel of Germany in one one hundredth scale. For those of you unfamiliar, the Lafayette submarine was uh, really kind of the go-to ballistic missile submarine uh, of the 1980s during the height of the Cold War. It replaced the Ethan Allen class. These submarines are kind of notable because they were one of the first to have uh, a hover system installed that was supposed to help with stability when they launched their ballistic missiles. And as you will see here a little later on, this particular model can do just that. So this is a fiberglass kit offered by Engel of Germany, as I mentioned earlier on. Uh, it's about 50 inches in overall length of a beam of four inches. Not a tremendous amount of detail. This was one of the earlier uh, angle kits, if I'm not mistaken, uh, but has a tremendous amount of presence on and under the water. Uh, it is uh, an angle system. It utilizes a piston style ballast system that I'm going to show you here in a little bit. Uh, hull access is via a single bayonet seal right here. And in just a moment, I'm going to crack that open and show you what it looks like. When I got it, the boat was basically just black and red. It wasn't very exciting. I did a little bit of weathering on here. So we've got salt streaking, rust streaking, uh, just a little bit of visual interest. Also added the periscopes, which makes it much, much easier to operate at periscope depth, which is where a lot of sub skippers like to hang out when they're driving their boats. So let's take a look at how this boat is put together. It's a nice size, but uh, quite heavy considering it's, uh, it's rather small stature because it is uh, primarily a dry hull boat. Uh, access is gained by twisting the bayonet on the back there. So you give it a little bit of a turn counterclockwise and then the entire equipment tray comes out as a single piece, just like this. And this is the working guts of an angle Lafayette. So let's take a closer look at this, uh, kind of front to back. This is how it's oriented inside the boat. You got a pressure switch on the front and uh, that's a safety switch uh, it limits the depth that the boat will go. It'll automatically blow the ballast if you get below, I believe, six feet, if I'm not mistaken. It's a Futaba 7-channel receiver. Here's your, uh, your power switch. This is the interrupt for the receiver right here. In the off position, the boat's not uh, drawing any power. Uh, and to turn the boat on and off, you just move that power switch right there. We've got a, a receiver battery. Uh, underneath here and then uh, we got our main drive battery bank we've got actually one here and another one at the back and they split that for weight distribution uh, an SPC3 uh, automatic pitch control unit and then our main ballast tank uh, and again that's a piston style ballast tank uh, with the drive motor the limit switches and the electronics that control it. And then in the back here, we've got our servos for dive planes and rudders. Now, uh, something you can't see is the rear compartment here that houses the main drive motor and the electronic speed controller. On the bottom, underneath here, you do have a small hatch that can be opened up and that gives you access to your linkages and your bellow seals in the rear area there. Uh, just take a look at that rudder configuration since we're right here. You can see it's got a really tremendous upper rudder and uh, a rather diminutive lower rudder. So as you would expect, this boat actually has a significantly better turning radius when it's fully submerged, which is very typical for a modern style submarine. So let's power this thing up so you can see uh, how it works, shall we? Uh, let's turn our transmitter on and we can turn our boat on. 
So now we've got rudder control. We got our dive planes. And these are on an, uh, an automatic pitch controller. So you can see as I move the stern of the boat, the planes move to correct the pitch. We've got our uh, electronic speed controller, our throttle, nice and smooth, forward and reverse. And last but not least, we've got our uh, ballast system. So just to review these controls here, we've got rudder and dive planes, throttle uh, on this stick, and then ballast, which is the only other one you need to worry about, is on this switch. When you're holding the transmitter, it would be like this. So you put the switch down to go down to dive, and then you move it up towards you to surface. So if we hit the button, the piston tank is cycling, and you can stop it at any point uh, at the desired level of buoyancy. The only other thing really of note is uh, you want to make sure that you pay attention to these connectors on the bottom, which is sort of the main power buses. One goes to the dive system and one goes to the electronic speed controllers. These can be pulled out to make sure that you disconnect the battery uh, so that there's no parasitic drain that takes place to kill your batteries. I'm going to go ahead and put this back together again. Really the big trick to this is you just want to make sure that you're not trapping any wires in here. So just slip it in and it'll go in really easily. Just make sure again that there's no wires that are getting pinned or trapped. And the secret I determined is to move the uh, bayonet about a half an inch counterclockwise and then push directly in. Don't twist, just push straight in. Otherwise what can happen, that seal can become unseated. And that is it. Super easy. We got all our controls. And we're ready for the pool or pond or lake. So let's talk about how this works in the water. Being a modern submarine, it does not have a terribly awesome turning radius. The control surfaces are placed in front of the propeller, which is done in real submarines to reduce the acoustic signature of the boat and keep it as silent as possible. What that does though, is it does degrade the uh, ability of the boat to respond to pitch and yaw inputs. That said, because of the tremendous size of the rudders on this boat, it actually has a pretty decent turning radius for a modern boat. Full flying rudders, which means you've got full surface area, is going to turn about as good as you can possibly expect. It also has exceptionally good response to pitch inputs, which is really, really important. It is very quick as well. Uh, very streamlined shape as most modern submarines are means it will get up and move fairly quickly. Now I did not have the opportunity to take this out for open water testing but it did perform absolutely amazing in my swimming pool as you can see. So all in all I would say that this is a tremendously fun boat to operate. It's actually relatively simple as well particularly as angle boats tend to go. It is going to be a lot of fun for the new owner. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed running through it with me here in this video. At the time of me making this, the boat is up for sale, but my Dive Tribe members get first crack at it. It's a $10 per year membership and you get access to our bi-weekly meetings where we talk submarines, submarines, and all submarines. So I really hope you consider joining us. You'll get first crack at new boats that I get, and you get to learn a lot about RC submarines from some of the most experienced people in the hobby. With that, I am going to let you go. Again, my name is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus Dry Docks. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like and subscribe. It really does help me out a lot. I appreciate it. If you have anything that you'd like to answer, you can drop a comment uh, or question down below or email me anytime, bob at nautilusdrydocks.com. I would love to hear from you. With that, I'm going to let you go. 
You have a great rest of your day, and I will catch you next time.